So in the last video, we talked about the Kronecker Delta, we defined what it is, and we did a quick example of how we can write a dot product using the Kronecker Delta. Now in this video, I want to introduce the Levi Savita symbol, and you might hear it called the permutation symbol or tensor or, or the um, alternating tensor. But anyway, it's uh, often called the Levi Savita symbol and we write a, 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 an epsilon and then, and then indices, usually three indices. It might be defined for, for two or, or four or more indices as well, but usually you'll see it with three, three indices. So let's see. So to say what this is, it's kind of hard to write it equals and then brackets out and have it uh, make sense. So let's just start with one case. So if, if i equals one, j equals two, and k equals three, we have we have, whoops, one, two, three. Go like that neater, one, two, three. So if the indices go one, two, three, it equals one. And now if we switch the places of any two of these indices, so say, say Levi Civita symbol two, one, three, we got there by switching the place of the one and two. Here it equals negative one. So this, this is the case for, for any combination of one, two, three uh, you can get. So let's, let's just look at another one. So we do E, one, three, two. What would this be? Well, we got to one, three, two from switching the two and the three. So we pick up a negative sign. One, three, two is negative one. And then let's just do one more like that. Um, we go two, three, one, what do we get? Well, uh, to go from here to here, we need to switch, we need to, to, to switch the indices twice. So we can switch two and one to get to two, one, three, and that's negative one. So we picked up one negative sign from switching the indices once. And now if we take this and we, we switch one and three, we'll end up with two, three, one. So then we pick up another negative sign and we end up with one. All right, so hopefully you'll be able to find out whether it's one or negative one for any permutation of these one, two, three. And the other case is when there's a repeated index. So something like one, one, two. This has a repeated index, one appears twice. So, so i equals one and j equals one. Then the symbol equals zero. So similarly, if we have two, two, three, this equals zero. Anytime that there's a repeated index, it equals zero. So now let's use this to do a cross product. Let's see. So a cross product using the Levi Civita symbol can be written like this. CI, then we use our Levi Civita symbol, IJK, and then AJ, and then B, K. And I wrote this K kind of larger than the other indices, but it's also an index. So to see that this is a cross product, let's do what we always do and just plug in some examples for the indices. So let's see. So if C, if we want C1, so, so uh, A and B are vectors, so vector A, um, whoops, vector A equals something, A1, A2, A3, uh, and B, I'll just write B out, B equals B1, B2, B3, so these are both vectors, and when we take a cross product, we, we get another vector. So, so this, we're writing down the first element of this resulting vector. Um, all right. So let's just uh, go through and have, have uh, i equals 1. And then, and then I, I skipped writing a summation sign out here. Um, in the last video, I mentioned that when... Um, when an index appears more than once, it's implied that you're summing over 
all of those. So actually, let me let me just write um, just to make sure it's clear. Let me write this. I'll just write the summation. So this is the sum. That's an ugly one. A little bit less ugly. So this is the sum over j and k. So j and k both appear twice. Um, so ci ci equals those things. <laughs> All right, so anyway, so we wouldn't have to write that, and, and oftentimes you'll see that, and I know that's what tripped me up a lot. I, I didn't see, I didn't realize that I was supposed to sum everything. Uh, but anyway, there it is. So let's start with i equals 1, and then, and then we'll cycle through j and k. So first, we'll do j and k equal 1. And uh, so everything equals 1 this time. So 1, 1, 1, a1, b1. A1, B1, all right, and then let's do J equals one, K equals two, one, one, two, K equals two, uh, and then A1, B1, whoop, B2, K equals two. So you'll notice that here this symbol has a one, one, one in it. It has repeated indices, this one, one, two, has repeated indices. So these are all actually going to be zero, uh, but just for the exercise, we're, we're writing them all out. Uh, so let's go k equals three and j still equals one. We'll get uh, one, one, three, a one, b three, so k equals three, j equals one still. All right, so we've gone through all the j equals one cases. Um, continuing on the next line, we get epsilon, um, I still equals one. Uh, let's see, so we're doing J equals two now. Let's do K equals one. A two B one, whoop, B one. All right, there's that term. Now let's do the two, two term. So this is one, two, two. Then A two, B two. It's starting to form kind of a matrix here, or, or much like a matrix, where we see 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2. Anyway, so we'll use that pattern to continue writing these things. So here, j equals 2, k equals 3, 1, 2, 3, a 2, uh, b 3. So here we see our first, our first term that isn't going to be 0. Hooray! Um, anyway, uh, OK. So now we've gone through all of the j equals 2 cases, so now let's do the j equals 3. 1, 3, 1, a 3, b 1, plus epsilon 1, 3, 2. So here's another case where we don't have repeated indices, so this, this term will end up not being 0. Um, forcing myself to write all of these terms that will be 0. All right, one more, and then this is 1, 3, 3, A, 3, B, 3. All right, so that was all for the first term. Um, all right, so, so epsilon 1, 1, 1, repeated indices. Maybe I'll change colors just to cross it out in a more colorful way. Repeated indices, repeated indices. Repeated indices, repeated indices, not repeated indices. Woo, and this is one, two, three. Uh, so this is one, positive one, uh, uh, repeated indices, no repeated indices. And this one actually, uh, we see that this is one, three, two. It's this same thing except, um, except the two and the three are switched. So this will actually be a negative one, and this has repeated indices. So let's see. So if we write C11 or, or C1, uh, cutting through all of this crap, C1 equals positive 1, A2, B3. And, uh, and then this term, this is negative 1, so we subtract A3, B2. All right. So we have one of our terms. Uh, or, or one of our one of our components of vector C.